if you are leery, weary, drained, and the moment you get some of that discomfort, you revert back to the old thing, you didn't really want it. All right, my friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast, very fun episode. We're talking about pain, how to embrace it, how to use it to make you better. We have a little bit of office talk. How do you focus your staff to be the best they possibly can be? Closing thought of the episode, this is the Ultimate OD Podcast. Here we go. All right, my friends, the Ultimate OD Podcast Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have an amazing episode for you. You know what? I could give you a bunch of introductions, but I'm so jacked up for this, I'm going to get right after it. Today, I'm going to just start off with asking you this. Do you like pain? Do you like pain? All right, think about this. I might be weird. I might be different. I think in my life, if you have no pain, you will not grow. You can't grow without pain. I say that to my staff. I say it to myself. Sometimes, and I do this from a physical nature, I just want to hurt, right? When it's whether I'm running a marathon, I'm running uh, to run, if I'm gonna go work out, I'm like, I want to punish my body. I don't know why. It's a weird, sick feeling that I have, right? But I like it. It helps me release whatever is pent up inside and whatnot. And I like knowing that I can handle it, that I can look that you know, monster, if you're running, look that brick wall in the face and say, I still have it. I can still go. When I did triathlons, I am a horrible swimmer. I have short arm, or I guess I have long arms for my body, but that does not matter. I'm a horrible swimmer. I'm like a rock that is just going straight down. But I did an Olympic, you know, triathlon, a couple of those. Swam uh, in Ludington, the length of the pier, and freezing cold water in my mind, but I did it. I ran marathons, I played college football, I did things that challenged me physically, okay? That mental toughness, that mental callus that I built that says, you know what, it hurts, but you'll keep going, I've carried on with me through school, all right? I carry this through business. When I first started cold, it was hard, but I knew I was just going to keep showing up and I was going to keep moving forward, right? I don't care if you're running, walking, crawling. If you're moving forward, you're making progress. It hurts sometimes. It's hard. Okay. So think about that question. I start off with that because that's literally where this episode kind of came from, right? Do you like pain? All right. Let me ask you this question now. I'm going to ask you something else. Pretty broad and open question. What do you want? When I say that, what comes to your mind? Car? Office, income, time, freedom. You want a pool? I want a pool. What do you want? If you can't answer that, you need to really sit back and think, what do you really want? Not what does optometric management say you should have and want. Not what your spouse says you want. Not what your parents, not what your kids, you know, not what your colleagues, your friends. What do you want? All right. It's a really simple and broad question. But it's really hard to answer. I had a patient yesterday. She came in and it was Wednesday. Came out on Wednesday and she's super tan. It's the middle of June, the beginning of June in Michigan. So sun's been out a lot and I go, either you just got back from vacation or you've been out in the sun enjoying it like crazy. And she's like, oh, I have the best job ever. I work three twelves Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'm off four days. I have four-day weekends. I get paid full time. I have benefits. I don't have to work nights. I don't or I don't have to work weekends. I don't have to work holidays. It's like that does sound pretty awesome. I want that, right? So that was just something like that's a great life. I want that. Now think back to when you started your office, right? Think about that pie in the sky vision. What was your office going to be like? What were you going to do different? From everyone else. Oh, we're never going to have a patient wait. You know, if a patient has a problem, we're going to take care of it like this. My staff is going to be the best staff that you could possibly have. They're going to love our mission. They're going to work hard. They're going to show up on time. We're going to be awesome. You also said some variation of, I'm going to practice this way 
Because that's what I believe in. Are you? Seriously, are you practicing the way that you thought you would? My guess is we all, to some extent, are doing the same things, right? We know the practice that we want. We want to be really medically focused, but we still put all this money into the optical. We want to be a high-end optical, but you know what? Those those managed care plans can only have so many frames. We better have some of these frames in there for them, right? Are you practicing the way you want, right? Or you take managed care and complain about reimbursements. You know, are you the solo practitioner that just can't take a vacation, right? If I don't work, we're not going to get any money and I can't provide for my family. I can't do this or that. Did you just trade one job for another and this job is a little bit better because you're the boss, but really it's running your life, right? Remember that question I asked at the beginning? Do you like pain? Now, it's easy to say I'm going to go work out like crazy and handle that pain when it's, you know what? I am sick of managed care. I'm going to drop these plans and I'm going to build a practice that they value my skills and abilities and they'll pay for what I'm worth. Well, you know, 60% of my practice is managed care. That VSP, maybe I'll keep VSP. I'll keep IMED. Just those two. Those are the only two I'm going to take. Okay, then you're still a slave to the machine, right? Again, I am not calling you out because I'm that doctor. I have man- I take all the managed care, but I know the life I want. I know what kind of office I want. To have. I know how I want, want, how I want to practice, right? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not bashing the profession. We make six figures easy, right? We have a cookie cutter schedule. You can work nine to five and be very profitable. I close at noon on Fridays. I work Monday through Thursday, a half day on Fridays, nine to noon, right? If I want time off, I take time off. If I want to take a vacation, I take a vacation. It hurts. I'm like, oh, there's revenue. I'm going to be turning away. What if these patients go somewhere else? You know, they, they, they don't need me. I'm not there. They're never going to come back. All these things happen, right? There are things that go through your mind. Let's talk about pain, all right? The only time you make a change is when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Let me say it again. The pain of staying the same, taking the managed care plans, not doing your dry eye practice, not doing my OP management because it's not profitable. I need to get that another comprehensive exam in because that's $300 of revenue. Whereas if I do a dry eye consult or I do a my OP management consult, you know what? They didn't sign up and I just ah, left money on the table, right? It's going to hurt a little bit to do what you want to do. Now, if you don't want the pain, that's okay, right? But stop lying to yourself and saying that you really want this big dream. You really want this type of practice. If you're not willing to suffer through some of that pain, you don't really want it, and that's okay. But accept it and make the most of what you have, right? But if you're someone like me that wants more, Stop just talking about it. Get ready for the pain and get ready to do what needs to be done to get where you want to be. At the end of last year, 2022, I just looked at what I was doing and I'm like, you know what? Tons of revenue and then I buy a bunch of equipment. I got my OCT, got my IPL. I got all of this. I want more. I want a business. I want multiple doctors. I want that dream where I have multiple locations, right? I've made myself miserable thinking about growth. But you know what? I'm making the most changes I've ever made. I'm this close to taking that next step for the avalanche to start, right? Tectonic plates, they're stuck together and they they keep going, 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 and then the earthquake happens, right? I feel that I'm on the cusp, but it's been a conscious, focused effort, very disciplined and very just tunnel vision. Okay, now because I've done that, we've given up some opportunities, right? There's some things that I could have done that would have made me more money in the short term. But you know what? I am going towards this. I'm not going to make X, Y, or Z move because it puts my main goal aside. That hurts sometimes, right? Also, I know when I make the next move and I move in, to the new location, I hire that other doctor, it's going to be hard to give up some of my control 
to take a little bit more risk, to have to delegate. But I've accepted that. I've started giving things to my managers, right? You're going to run optical. You're going to make the buying decisions. You're going to manage the staff. You're going to handle the schedule. I am out of that world. You guys are going to run this. That's been hard for me, right? I can do it better, but I've accepted this. I will accept this pain to get what I want. Remember, if the pain's too much, don't chase that dream. It doesn't mean that much to you. Embrace the pain. Get used to it. If you just accept that it's going to hurt, but you're going to be better for it, you will survive. If you are leery, weary, drained, And the moment you get some of that discomfort, you revert back to the old thing. You didn't really want it. All right. It's not easy to say. And I say this to myself all the time. I've had opportunities to grow. I had opportunities to have multiple offices, multiple locations, but it hurt too much. I didn't know how to handle this. I had to give up control. I realized that the biggest thing standing in my way was myself, right? I didn't want that kind of pain. I didn't want to have, you know, I've had four kids in the past seven years, right? But I didn't want to have a newborn and do that. I want them to have the right house. I want them to be in the right schools. I didn't want the pain of a little discomfort for them that they would have gladly accepted because I would have felt bad. That's on me, right? What are you not doing because you don't want some discomfort in your life? Think about that and realize that The other aspect of you making this happen that makes the pain a little less uncomfortable is how you perceive time, right? The longer your time horizon, the easier it is to have the pain, right? If you're running a marathon, you can go a little bit different pace, right? You still feel a little discomfort, but you're not going quite as hard. If you're trying To win the marathon in the first mile, you're going to die, right? You're going to burn out. You're going to fail. So know your time horizon. The longer time horizon, the more likely you are to succeed. You know why? Because everyone else is on this two, three, five-year plan will quit because it hurts too much. They can't handle discomfort. You know that five years of discomfort gives you 25 years of happiness and joy. It's easier to do. But if you're like, I have to be to this place in five years, if I don't, I'm just, I just can't do it anymore. I got to stop. Lengthen your time horizon. Also, this is a cliche, but I'm going to say it. Stop keeping score. Just play the game. All right. What does that mean? In this world of growth, in this world of change and pain, it hurts more when you look at the scoreboard and you're down. It hurts more when you want to be to X, Y, or Z point and you're not there, right? When you're tracking yourself in a negative way. I'm not saying you don't measure things. You're not keeping track. But if you are a slave to the scoreboard, you'll never finish because you're going to be down. It's going to hurt. It's not going to happen like you thought it would, right? That being said, if you know you're playing the infinite game, you have endless amount of time that you just have to get your team into shape, get the ball rolling, get a little momentum, and you know the tortoise wins the race, right? You have that time horizon, you will feel much better about the discomfort you're feeling. So know the end game, know where you want to be, what you're working for. So pain needs to be embraced. If you can embrace it, you don't really want the goal. And then time horizon. Extend it out as far as you possibly can. And you're more comfortable with the pain you're dealing with. Because you know there's going to be a longer time of you not dealing with that. And reaping the rewards of the discomfort you feel right now. Now, at the end of the day, I asked you what you wanted. All right? Realize that it's okay to be contrarian. Okay? Don't say you want this because that's what they have. Don't say I want this because that'll make me happy. All right. Start looking at things from a different perspective. If you want change, if you want growth, then you can't keep doing the same things you've always done. If you want a practice that looks different from the guy, the girl down the street, don't do what they're doing. Do something different. This will help 
you grow. No, there's going to be pain. There's going to be time, but you will survive. You'll be better for it. That's what I have uh, more for you next week. All right, my friends, a little office talk. So trying to have the best possible business I possibly can. All right, I want to be different. I want to have a specialty niche. I love dry eye. It's going well. My patients are happy. My plan's working. We're high end. We're not volume. So it literally right now is all harvested internally, right? I get patients in for primary care. They go to dry eye. We convert them. That's how we've been building a dry eye niche. At some point, when I have the space that I want, when I can really market it, we're going to flip on that external marketing strategy. It's been planned for. We know what we're going to do, but I'm waiting until I have that space and the ability to add another doctor. So if it blows up, we're not scrambling, right? So it's coming. That being said, dry eye is doing awesome. The other huge aspect of my office, I'm a managed care office, is optical. My optical has not been where I wanted to be after COVID. COVID happened. I said, we're not buying anything. Dropped, you know, cut my inventory in half, if not more. Took on a bunch of Altair brands because they're on consignment. And you know what? I had a cookie cutter office that my capture rate was garbage for frames, right? I looked at my boards. And I'm like, what is different? And then I realized I lost my identity. I used to have people coming from the outside in to see the frames we had on our boards. And then I went so bottom line, so, you know, money focused that I lost my edge. Okay. I realized my mistake and I instantly went to correct it. I've added a bunch of independent lines. I've really started educating my staff on optical. They can handle more than one thing. They can't handle three. I think three is the max, but one or two. Dry eye practice. Now let's make our optical that much better. It's amazing what happens when you focus on things. It really is. The staff listens. They know it matters. They start doing what you ask. If you're not getting the results you want, maybe you're asking too many things or your messaging is mixed up all over the place. Shotgun scatter style. Dry eye, sclerals, myopia management, vision therapy, optical. Oh my. Think about you trying to be good at all of those things and throw on glaucoma, macular degeneration, all the advancements in medical care, OCTA, IPL, you know, radio frequency. Oh my goodness, how can I manage this? And you love it. It's your business. Your staff doesn't love it like you do. Pick your two things. Make it a priority, make it the focus of what you do, and just go six months to a year knocking those out. You're going to see amazing changes. I've seen it in my office. That's how you grow your office. That's how you get your staff to be on board for your mission. That's a culture thing. Tune in. We'll have more next week. Where or oh where has the time gone? We are to the closing thought of the episode, and today... I want to talk to you about taking away the power of no, taking away the power of rejection. We want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want people to like us. If we put something out there, a treatment, an option for, you know, therapy, um, same thing right there, right? But, you know, you put something out to a patient and they say no, or you get rejected by you know, an opportunity you were pursuing, it hurts. It sucks. Like, oh, I don't want to do that again. Let me tell you this. Something I learned a long time ago. Hungry does not care about rejection. If you are hungry, you're trying to survive. When I was waiting to go to optometry school, I had no money. My buddy had a roofing company. So in order to get money, I had to get leads for the salespeople. So I had to literally drive around look for people that had bad roofs, and ask them if they want an estimate. So I'm literally going up to a stranger's house, knocking on the door, and trying to get them to say yes to something I'm selling. Sounds awful, doesn't it? 
But you know what? I had no money in my pocket, and I didn't care. I was just going to knock on doors, and I was very good at it. I've taken that with me when I go to optometry school. When I was walking into a patient, I had that same mentality of, I'm going to say hi to this person. I'm going to make them like me in this inter brief interaction, and from there, we will go and be better for it. Right? So I got that hunger. When I started my office, I had no patients. I had a lot of money invested into this business. I was not going to fail. If a patient said no, they didn't want to buy glasses. If they uh, said X, Y, or Z, I would, why? Can you please tell me why? What can I do to make this better for you, etc.? Salesy, yes, but I was hungry. I didn't care about no. When I purchased the IPL, I said, I am not going to be afraid to offer patients the best possible treatment they can have to treat their dry eye. I get a lot of no's, but I get a lot of yeses, and I've accepted that. When you are hungry, no doesn't hurt. Rejection doesn't matter. And then, if you're if you're smart, you realize that you don't have to be hungry. You just have to know who you are, what you believe in, what you're putting out there, and the rejections and the no's don't hurt you. You will be a better doctor. You'll be a better, more confident person when you take the power of no and rejection and throw it in the garbage. That's what I have for you. Dr. Lily out.